However, he's a great God. Praise the Lord. Welcome to Bible study tonight. I am so grateful, so thankful for all of you that are joining us tonight, wherever you are in the world. I am grateful and thank you. Thank you for, thank you for joining us today. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we are glad, and we shall rejoice in it. Thank God for waking us up this morning and giving us the activities of our limbs. He's a great God, and I'm hopeful, grateful for what our future holds. You know, the devil tries to tell you that the future is bad, and it ain't going to work out, and things are going to go wrong. But we serve a God who has it all in his control, and so we don't have to be feared or anything. I want to thank our praise and worship team along with our Minister of Music and the Director of our Music Department, Reverend Stephen Hurd, for uh, leading us to remind us how, how great our God is. He's an awesome, incredible, mighty God. So thank you for joining us tonight. So let me real quickly before I pray just announce again something I announced Sunday that a whole lot of people miss. I'm finding out that people don't tune right in at the start. They come in late. And I'll announce it again at the end that we are going back into worship live beginning December the 12th. Second Sunday in December, 9 and 11.30 a.m., we will be coming back together at our worship center. So tonight and um, Sundays and on Tuesdays, we'll be uh, broadcasting from our ministry center because because the worship center, we've made some incredible updates to the technology and we're just getting it ready since right now it's a big studio. Everything all over is just wires everywhere. And as we've taken out old equipment and putting in new equipment and getting everything set up, now we've got to get it ready to get to receive you back. And I'm excited about it. I've been talking with our staff, and we're getting ready. And if you're one of our volunteers, we want you to make sure you're in place and, and ready and prepared. I'm so excited. I got word today that we've, we've got people who have joined to help us serve our children. That was one of my big worries and stresses. But the, the team has come together, and we're going to have uh, the ability to serve our children, Sunday school and whatever, all the things we did before, we're going to be able to do that. And I want to thank those who stepped to the plate. I know there's still some people functioning under fear, but we're not, we're not, we're not, we're, God has not given us a spirit of fear. We're not worried about it. We're going to take our precautions. We're going to, we'll be letting you know about, we're going to be wearing masks and we'll check temperatures when you come in. We're going to do all of that. But I'm grateful for those who have decided to serve. And I see the world going back. I see people going to football games, stadiums, packed out. Right? <laughs> Arenas, packed out with people, movie theaters, plays. Right? Everything's going back. The, the grocery stores got people lined up in lines. And the church, it's time for us to come back. And so we're coming back. So I've been monitoring three things. I'm almost finished here. I've been monitoring the, uh, uh, the vaccination rate in our county. Number two, I've been monitoring the infection rate. Is, are the infections going up or going down? And all of the, those things are going in the right place right direction. We're excited about that. They're moving in the right direction. And number three, I was monitoring the number of people who will be willing to come and serve our children. I did not want to come back and tell parents they can't bring their children. When it's all said and done, I'm a, I'm a father, a husband, a daddy. I'm a family man at heart. And it will be difficult for me to be able to say to parents, you can come, but you can't bring your kids. And so I want to thank those servers those volunteers and those staff who said we'll serve the children. I'm very, very, very thankful and grateful. So I'll probably say the same thing at the end because I want to make sure they understand how grateful I am. And for those who are uncomfortable, that's fine. If you're uncomfortable, stay home. We don't, if, you, if you have anxiety about it, it's okay. But I'm grateful for those who don't have anxiety. And I thank you for being willing to do so anyway, uh, let's do what we do every week. We spend a moment or two and we pray for uh, souls that need Jesus in their life. And I want to do what I normally do. We, that's what we want to do as we start every Tuesday night and every Sunday. Pray for people who need, who are lost. Huge number of people in our country who are blinded by the enemy and lost. So let's pray. 
Father, I thank you today for the wonderful privilege that you give to us to call on your name and to beseech your throne. Thank you that you wake us up and you've given us the activities of our limbs and you've ordered our steps and you've protected us and you're the God that uh, just loves us and cares for us. And we pray, Father, in Jesus' name for your uh, anointing on our dialogue tonight. Pray that you bless our time, that hearts be open and receptive in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray that, Heavenly Father, that if there are persons who are watching this broadcast, who are unsaved, who don't know you, who are, who are backslidden or unsure or unchurched, that, Father, you would draw them to yourself today in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that. I pray it and I beseech you for that in Jesus' name. Draw them to yourself for your glory and honor. Let some truth that is discussed, some principle that is highlighted, some, some words that are spoken that would change lives and influence hearts. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. All right. Listen, tonight is a, is a really a special night because I've invited somebody who I view as a spiritual son to come and uh, share with us tonight. Uh, he has, he travels the world, really, uh, in doing the work that he does. Uh, he's, tech, I think his term, his, his uh, uh, title, or his, I don't even think he carries a title, but his, uh, his job assignment, they call him a motivational speaker. But he's really, a, he's, a, he's a cognito preacher is what he is. <laughs> He, he ought to stop walking around talking about he a motivational speaker. He's a preacher. Uh, he is Brother Delatoro McNeil. Brother <laughs> Delatoro, I'm so glad to have you here tonight. Honor with indeed. Him, bro. Honor indeed. Pastor, uh, I love you so much. We, we love you too. He's uh, got a master's degree. He's authored eight books. We'll talk about that in a moment. And, a, and so many other uh, personal growth and professional development courses, online courses, coaching programs. He helps people become the best that God wants them to become. Amen. Amen. And I'm excited about that. Uh, he has been awarded various prestigious awards and designations. He's received some of the highest international recognition for professional speaking with excellence. And I'm honored and delighted to have him. He's been on television both nationally, internationally, ABC, NBC, BET, TBN, Daystar, Fox. He's been on them all. Uh, and uh, he's the father of two wonderful daughters, Miracle and Hope, and he's with us tonight. Delator, I'm so glad to have you, bro. <laughs> Pastor, and, I love uh, you. I love you. Thank Appreciate you. How you, you been doing, buddy? I'm doing phenomenal. I'm doing really, really amazing. God is so good. I wonder if any of our, our viewers have had the opportunity to read any of your books. Talk about, like, what's your most popular book, and just tell us the name of some of the other books you've read. Sure, Talk sure. Talk about that for a moment. So um, I've published eight books. The book that we're currently going to be talking about tonight is our eighth book. and uh, But the one that came right before that, which was the flagship that really got us known all over the world, was called Caught Between a Dream and a Job, How to Leave the Nine to Five Behind and Step into the Life that You've Always Wanted. And that book got us on major television networks all across the country and around the world because we were helping people shift out of that place when they were caught between their paycheck and their promise, their destiny and their daily routine, right? The thing that pays the bills versus the thing that pays their future. And so uh, we're, we're grateful for that book. And we've written other books since then. We wrote a book called Platinum Presentations, 52 Tips to Speak with Confidence, Win Your Audience, and Grow Your Bank Account. When we went through uh, the massive turndown in the market in 2008, I wrote a book called Thriving Through Your Storms, 12 Profound Lessons to Help You Grow Through Anything You Go Through in Life. Mm -hmm. So I believe in publishing because I believe in the importance of taking what God has given us and putting it in a form that will outlast us. And so I believe that publishing is finishing. And that's one of the most important goals that people say they have, but most people go to their grave with their shoulda, coulda, wouldas. Yeah. And so I firmly believe in taking what God gives you and putting it on paper so that it can outlive yourself. Yeah, there are a lot of people in our church who God has inspired them to do some things, and uh, many of them haven't been able to, to complete it, yeah. me being one of them. So. <laughs> uh, I'm, but I'm actually uh, in the closing final stages of writing my first book. Fantastic. You know, I have written... Uh, chapters in other people's books, okay. and I've been working on this book for a long time. <laughs> and and one of the reasons I haven't probably finished it is that I never felt good enough about it. You know, mm. and I know there's a lot of people. Let me. I'm diving into one of the things that you talk about. 
Uh, but let me just go ahead and hit it since, I, since I'm on it for a moment. Yeah. A lot of people don't feel good about themselves. Yes, or they sir. don't feel good about what they what they are producing or want to produce That's or right. what they have produced or whatever. And I know you speak to that. Take, take a moment. I know this. We're going to hit him right off the bat. Yeah, Bam, yeah, right yeah, off the bat. You going in for the juggler. <laughs> because that's an important thing. It's so talk, huge. spend it's a huge. moment and talk about that. So one of the things that I firmly believe, Pastor, one of the things that I love about this book, the book is called Shifting to a Higher Gear. Yeah, let me, let me just uh, put this up here for a moment. Yeah. And I know that they have, um, they have a, 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 graphic, a graphic of this. Put that yeah. graphic up. Yeah, Shift into a Higher Gear, Better Your Best. And live life to the fullest by Delator McNeil. So it's helping you to become everything God wants you to become. <laughs> so go ahead, talk about that. For We're a moment. so passionate about this book, Pastor. This is our eighth book, and the whole purpose of this book is to help people make small shifts that really make the big difference. And you, being a pilot, understand the importance of metaphors. So this book is built upon a motorcycle metaphor, but you don't have to have ever ridden a motorcycle or have any interest in riding a motorcycle to get the points and the principles. So what you're asking me about is actually featured in chapter 10 of the book where we talk about shift your position to shift your condition. And one of the things that I teach in that chapter is all about a concept called the cat don't care, Pastor. <laughs> The cat don't care. Talk the, about the that. The cat don't care, Pastor. Mm -hmm. And it deals with this feeling that we all have about whether or not we are really good enough to really go after all the things that God has in our heart to go after. And a lot of us have self-doubt. We have limiting beliefs. We have self-sabotage. We have all types of things that, in, our, in my honest opinion, hold us back from really moving in the direction that God would have us to go. So, Pastor, the cat don't care, which has actually turned into a whole global phenomenon, came from a conversation I was having with my brother. He was in a tough place a few years after my mom passed, and he was just in a dark place. So we were at a restaurant talking, and he was telling me how bad his life was. You know, and in the middle of that conversation, I said, Mike, do you know why they say you should never feed a stray cat? And he was like, what? He said, I'm telling you how bad my life is. What are you talking about a cat for? <laughs> I said, do you know why they say you should never feed a stray cat? And he was perplexed. What he didn't understand that I was doing, Pastor, was what we call in psychology a pattern interrupt. Because sometimes what happens is we get so used to our same normal routine of talking down, feeling down, being down, that we need a, an interruption in that way of thinking. So I had to shift this pattern, paradigm. So I said, do you know why they say you should never feed a stray cat? He said, why, why? Dude, just tell me why. I said, because, you know, if you feed the stray cat, it's going to keep coming back. And he's like, yeah, okay, cool, I get that. What's your point? I said, Michael, when the cat comes back, does the cat care? Pastor, here's where it's powerful. Does the cat care what car you drive before it drinks the milk? Does the cat care what St. John dress you have in your closet? Does the cat care what country club you belong to? Mm -hmm. Does the cat care, you know, how many, how many Italian suits you have? Why? The cat doesn't care about that. The cat just wants good food. And I was trying to help my brother understand that at the end of the day, you and I are so consumed by mm -hmm. all of these things mm -hmm. that we think the cat cares about, mm -hmm. and the cat just wants good food. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, if we can learn to just put good content out there, people will keep coming back to what it is that we have to offer. If we serve people with excellence, people will keep coming back. Bishop T.D. Jakes taught us this. Excellence can never be hidden. If you go to an excellent movie, you're going to tell somebody. You take an excellent vacation, you, you cannot be hidden if you operate in excellence. Mm -hmm. So that's what the cat don't care is, mm -hmm. the first part. The second part, Pastor, is even more profound. And I pulled this from my late mentor, the great may he rest in peace and power, Dr. Miles Monroe, who talks about the importance of the other cat that also doesn't care. Mm -hmm. And that's the lion. Mm -hmm. Now, Pastor, I think this is powerful if you think about it. The lion all around the world is considered the king of the jungle. Mm -hmm. But the lion has a lot of disqualifying aspects about itself that really shouldn't qualify it to be king. <laughs> mm -hmm. The lion is not the fastest animal in the jungle. Mm -hmm. The cheetah is much faster. Mm -hmm. The lion is not the tallest animal in the jungle. The giraffe is much taller. Mm -hmm. The hippopotamus is much heavier. Mm -hmm. The monkey is much smarter. And every single one of us, guess what? There's people who have a bigger social media following. Come on. There's people who have bigger bank accounts. There's people who are faster than us in our industries. And, and, and even though the lion has all of those qualities and aspects about itself that don't, quote, qualify it up against others, it's still the king for one reason. It believes that it is. Mm -hmm. That lion looks at all those other animals as one word, lunch. <laughs> That lion looks at all those other animals as a snack, as a meal. He says, listen, if I, if I take you down, I feed my family 
for a week. Mm -hmm. The lion is the king because he believes he is, and he doesn't care mm -hmm. about those other limiting things. So what am I trying to say to y'all tonight, First Baptist Church of Glenarden? You might have certain individual entities, aspects about yourself that you don't think qualify you to my, be. My, ah, my, come on, my, somebody. My. You you discount my. yourself because yeah. you feel, but you got to understand, I can do all things mm -hmm. through Christ that strengthens me. Mm -hmm. And even my, my, my weaknesses, are his strength is made perfect mm -hmm. in our weakness. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to be the fastest. Mm -hmm. I don't have to be the tallest. I don't have to be the strongest to be the king or the queen of my mm -hmm. own pride rock. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to help people understand, Pastor. My <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> You have already preached a sermon from just the first question that I raised here because so many people struggle and are challenged yeah. by their, their own self-esteem yeah. and self-worth. Self-doubt, yes. And uh, I have often shared with people how much I had low self-esteem and how much I used to be depressed and all of that growing up. Mm -hmm. But God shifted in my, in my thinking, in my mm. heart, that it, ain't, it really ain't even about me. That's right. It's about the Christ that's in you. Yes. When you have Christ inside you, and I like that verse you quoted, uh, 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 um, greater that uh, Christ makes us new creations and yes. new people, and yeah. he, uh, He's greater in us. That's right. So I thank you for that. So, so let me let me just try to get to some of these questions <laughs> I prepared because <laughs> we could, we could spend the rest of the day just on that, just dealing on just that one that point. One point right there is so yeah. profound. I mean, you know, there are other people prettier than you, handsomer than yes. you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so many more things Stronger than you. Stronger than you. Faster. Yeah. There's, there's, there's businesses out there who got more money mm -hmm. in the SBA, EIDL. Loan. Absolutely. So, there's, so you have a choice today. You got a decision to make. Am I going to focus on what I don't have or am I going to focus on what I do have, mm -hmm. what God has given me? He's the alpha and the omega, beginning and the end. He thought about your entire life mm -hmm. before he dropped you on this earth. And I believe that God thought over our life enough, Pastor, to put everything in us that we needed Absolutely. to be successful. Amen. So when we doubt ourselves, we're slapping God in the mm -hmm. face saying, you didn't think about my life enough mm -hmm. to make me a singer. To if, 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 here's what I believe. If you don't have that gift, you didn't need it to complete the assignment. Woo! If Wait, you don't have... Say I'm, what? <laughs> I just believe oh, it. say that again. <laughs> say that again. If you don't have that gift, mm -hmm. you don't need it to fulfill the assignment. My if Lord, he, if, have mercy. if he's the Alpha and Omega, which yeah, he, is, he is, he thought about the whole thing. Yeah, which means he put in you everything My that you God, need. That's wonderful. If 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 Powerful. Scripture says God put the seed of everything within itself. When was the last time you saw an apple leave its own self to go get something it needed from an orange to be an apple tree? Yeah, right. Ah! That's right. <laughs> an apple does not have to go borrow anything it needs from an orange to be an apple tree. Yeah. The seed of everything is within itself. So when you realize that everything that you need, Scripture even says he gave us everything that we need according to life and godliness. It's already in you. Yeah. Just cultivate what's yeah. there. Yeah. Soar with your strength, pastor, and mm -hmm. staff your weakness. Yeah. People say get better at your weakness. No, staff it. <laughs> <laughs> Let somebody else go. Hire people to do yeah. the things that you're not innately yeah. good at. I'm not saying don't, don't work on getting better in certain areas where you're weak. That's not what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I think all of us, one of the biggest things we talk about in the book is shift small things to make a big difference. Mm -hmm. But I firmly believe so many of us, especially as high achieving believers, mm -hmm. we beat ourselves up all the time right. over certain skills mm -hmm. that you're never, the lion will never be tall. Right, right. Come on now. Yeah. The lion will never be heavy like the hippo. Yeah. He's never going to be agile like the snake. Mm -hmm. But he, and the term king is gender neutral for the purposes of this conversation, Amen. is still the king mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, that's his position. Amen. Disney made two, $12 billion off the Lion King teaching one concept, take your rightful position. Mm -hmm. And then guess what? The Black Panther took well, the well, same slow, concept. Slow down. You said $12 billion? To, the, the franchise, <laughs> according to Forbes magazine. $12 billion? $12 billion. The, the, the Lion King franchise, mm -hmm. movies and stage right. plays. Mm -hmm. A $12 billion wow. Dollar franchise wow. teaching one concept. Yeah. Simba had to take his rightful place. Mm -hmm. The Black Panther did the same thing. Mm -hmm. Prince T'Challa got defeated, had to take his rightful place. Mm -hmm. The whole concept is if you sit on a motorcycle backwards, you have no access to the controls. Mm -hmm. Shift your position mm -hmm. so you can shift your condition. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
Pastor, could you imagine? <laughs> sit, could you imagine sitting on a in, in a in a plane in a pilot cockpit backwards? Mm -hmm. But that's what we do when you sit on the motorcycle of life backwards, talking about how things used to be, talking about what you used to do, talking about who used to treat you that way. You're sitting on the motorcycle of life backwards. <laughs> you have no access to controls. You have no access to power. Mm -hmm. My God, <laughs> that's what's in that's what's in this book. That's yeah. what that's just a, in one chapter. Right. <laughs> now let me. You know what? This let me get to this. These questions because you you this that alone is that alone to just get the book and buy it. <laughs> um. So what motivated you to even write this book? What, what motivated Fantastic you? Fantastic question. So I love illustration. I love illustrated messages. My master's degree is in curriculum design and instructional systems. So when I came into the professional speaking industry, I wanted to do something more than just rah-rah. I really wanted to create transformation through my programs. Mm -hmm. And so I've always been drawn to illustrations, metaphors, and analogies. Mm -hmm. Jesus taught in parables. Mm -hmm. So I've used that as a framework. So mm -hmm. I've been riding my motorcycle for about the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. And what was powerful, Pastor, is every time I would ride it, God would give me these interesting downloads about how motorcycle riding paralleled life and business. Mm -hmm. So I just began to start writing them down. All of a sudden, I had a chance to, 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 pr to speak, preach mm -hmm. at a major church. I used, I brought my, mo my own motorcycle in <laughs> and did a whole illustrated sermon based upon that message called Living Life Full Throttle. Mm -hmm. It went so incredibly well, I got invited to five other churches to give the same message. Mm -hmm. It went incredibly well there. I turned it from a one-hour sermon into a four-day leadership conference. Mm. And we did that conference for about six years. Mm. During the pandemic, a publisher approached me from a dear friend, and I had a chance to pitch them on a book deal. And I said, I would love to turn my conference, the Full Throttle Experience, into an opportunity for the world to be blessed by this book. Mm. And so we took the principles and the concepts. We partnered with Barrett Kohler Publishers out of California and Penguin Random House, which is one of the biggest publishers and distributors on the planet, and we were able to produce this book. During the pandemic, we wrote this book, Pastor. Mm. <laughs> when everything else is down. When everything shut else down. Go, was, was shut mm -hmm. down, going down, I made a decision that I was going to go through differently. Because, Pastor, I believe this, and I think this is going to bless somebody right now. The word through is defined as in one side and out the other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Which means if you're going through, keep going. Mm -hmm because you're almost on the other side. Mm -hmm. And I think it's so powerful if we can learn to say, listen, I'm not gonna go through this mm -hmm. and not come out better. Mm -hmm. I took salsa classes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got my gun certification. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. I wrote a book. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I dropped weight. I grew my hair out. I mean, I did all kinds of yeah, stuff. Yeah, you did grow your hair out, bro. <laughs> you did grow it out. I said, who is that guy right there? <laughs> I mean, I, I went. All I the, wonder how I would look if I had one of those right like there. I think. I think you would like it. I think you look good. Doc. I, I really how, do. Well, you know, my hair stopped growing, so I can't grow it. Enjoy it while you got. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I would do that. I would do that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But the whole point is that we have a choice as to how we go through what we go through. Mm -hmm. And I believe that life is only twenty percent what happens to you, and it's eighty percent what you do about it. Mm -hmm. You got to make that decision. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, Excellent. It's one you. of the things in the book is about living a fulfilled life. Mm. <laughs> let's, let's talk a moment about, define that. What, what would you call a, def, a fulfilled life? That's a fantastic question. So there was a, um, a global health insurance organization that did a study a couple years ago, and they asked literally a million people all around the world how they would define a fulfilled life. Now, my faith-based answer to that question is, at the end of the day, hearing God say, well done, now good and faithful servant. To me, if, if God says that to a brother, I'm happy. I'm content. I also believe that living a fulfilled life is, at the end of the day, living full and dying empty. Everything that he put in you, you had a chance to deposit it here mm -hmm. on this planet. But according to the study, Pastor, there was a couple things that came out in the study when they asked people, what does living a fulfilling life mean? Mm -hmm. The number one response was family. Mm -hmm. Pastor, you're a family man, right? Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, living a fulfilling life means, do I have love for family and friends? And do I have family and friends around me that love and care about me? Number two, the second answer was success. Here's where we got to stop there. What is your definition of success? Mm -hmm. I think we got to get clear on what success means to each of us as individuals. The third response was, am I growing and contributing? If you're, you can feel like you're living a fulfilled life if you're growing and if you're contributing to humanity in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Mm -hmm. And then the fourth response was health. 
And I believe that. I believe that health is wealth. At the end of the day, no matter how much money you have, if you don't have the vitality to enjoy it, what is the point? Mm -hmm. So those are the four things that were that the survey said were the most important elements of living a fulfilling life. Hear those four things again now. Okay. Number one was family. Family. Mm -hmm. Number two was success, success based upon how you define it. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. And that, if we, if, if we can pause for 30 seconds, most of us define success, Pastor, based on someone else's definition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we never get there mm -hmm. because we're defining ourselves based upon what other, thi other people think it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The third one was, um, uh, so family, success. The third one was... Uh, Oh, yeah. Growth and contribution. Mm -hmm. Are you growing and are you contributing? And then number four was health and vitality. Mm -hmm. Those are the four indicators mm -hmm. as to whether someone's living a fulfilling life. Now, watch this. The same study polled countries all across the world. Do you know the United States ranked 65th mm. on the list of people rating themselves as living a fulfilled life? Mm. So here's my question. If we're the most powerful country in the world... Mm -hmm. With all of these advantages and all this technology, mm -hmm. why are we getting an F mm -hmm. globally mm -hmm. when it comes to living fulfilled? Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is, Pastor? That's a great question. That's what I want to. <laughs> That's so, what you want to ask me. <laughs> so, so, yeah. So, what are the things that that the barriers? Yeah, that keep people from living a fulfilled life. What, well, what, the, what, what's your answer to that? So, the, the, the study went on to say that basically there's four barriers that keep people from actually feeling fulfilled. Number one is money. The number one response was people said, I can't live my fulfilling life because I don't have enough money. Mm -hmm. The second response was... Slow down. Keep talking, but slow down. You're talking yeah. too fast. I talk too fast. Yes, Pe sir. Yeah, people need to hear what you're saying. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So, they, it gets, so, so that's number one, they think they have to have money. They think they have to have money in order to live a fulfilled life. Good. Okay? okay. Good. And and this these these four things are interesting because they they're... they're I'm going to teach you about how these are actually excuses, mm -hmm. but we're going to get to excuses in another chapter. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got to get this book, I'm telling you. But number one was money. Mm -hmm. Number two was time. Mm -hmm. I don't have enough time. Mm -hmm. I would live a more fulfilled life if I had more time to do things I enjoy. Mm -hmm. Number three was work responsibilities. I'm too busy working. And number four was priorities. Mm -hmm. I have other priorities, parenting or caregiving mm -hmm. or or teaching, or training, or, co or whatever, or, or being married in a relationship, et cetera, et cetera, right? So people felt like those were the four things that prevent them from living a fulfilled life. Mm -hmm. Money, mm -hmm. time, work, priorities. Mm -hmm. What would you say to those, Pastor? Yeah, I think everybody has to learn how to, how to manage those things in life. Yeah, you know, you yeah. have to learn uh, how to overcome That's those right. challenges and how to manage those things. So That's that, right. But, but I'm here to talk about this book here. Today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, I've been preaching for 32 years to try to teach people how to do these how things. How to do these from concepts. From a biblical stance. Yes, sir. But the thing I love about this easy-to-read book, I mean, it's a great book, and I want to encourage our members and those who are watching this to get this book because it's, it's an easy read for you. And Shift into a higher gear. He breaks it down for you. He really breaks <laughs> it down. Thank you so uh, much. For you. That's what I love about uh, your – he's a great illustrator. Just the thing about – Del Toro is he is a phenomenal illustrator. He gives you illustrations that resonate yes, sir. with your life and how yeah. you can apply it. So what so what would you say? Because yeah. I'm interviewing you. Yes, sir. Don't you be interviewing me. <laughs> what do you say about those four barriers? So I, so so here's what I believe. I believe that each one of those barriers are kickstands. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we talk about in the book is you have to shift your I, 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 I talk about the importance of you gotta shift into getting rid of excuses. That's one of the biggest things we talk about in the book is we got to shift from excuses to powerful declarations, Pastor, mm -hmm. because we can't ride with the kickstand down. Mm -hmm. So if we could talk about that for a quick second because that's one of the concepts that we talk about in Chapter 5. Each one of those things that was listed is an excuse. Mm -hmm. And the truth is every one of us every day make excuses for why we don't have the things that is that we want in our lives. Mm -hmm. And I believe that we make excuses for three reasons. Number one, our story. Number two, our state. And number three, our strategy. Mm -hmm. So if we can unpack those really quickly. Mm -hmm. Most of us have a story that we've told ourselves 10,000 times that justifies why we can't have what we can't have mm -hmm. and why we can't be what we want to be. Mm -hmm. That story could be nobody in my family's ever done it. That story could be, I'm, I, I don't have enough resources. I didn't grow up in the right neighborhood. I wasn't born on third base. Mm -hmm. I'm not this ethnicity, gender, race, or culture. 
So that's the story. And a lot of us tell that story over and over and over and again in our heads. Mm -hmm. Right. The second one is our state of mind, our mm -hmm. mental state. A lot of us are in poor mental states when we're trying to go after our goals and dreams. And when you're in a low vibrational, low performing state, you cannot make great decisions. I say this all the time. Mm -hmm. High income does not flow to low energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I got we got to stop right there. High income does not flow to low energy. Mm -hmm. Right. Like attracts like deep calls unto deep. At mm -hmm. the end of the day, you can't. I have never met someone who's crushing it, who has low energy. Mm -hmm. Everybody that I know that's crushing it has a level of passion and vitality behind what they do. Mm -hmm. So most of us have a whack story, we have a whack state of mind, and then we have a whack strategy. Mm -hmm. People think that persistence is the key to success. Mm -hmm. How many, Pastor, have you, how, have you seen a little bug in your window that's constantly beating its head up against the window <laughs> trying to get out? And you're like, you can do this all day. Mm -hmm. You go, and then you come back a couple minutes later, and the little bug, the mosquito's dead. Mm -hmm. Because persistence in the wrong direction is not success. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so, so what does the bug need to do? <laughs> the bug needs to go fly somewhere else. <laughs> it needs to do something different. It needs to do something different. Because do doing the same different. thing over and over again, expecting a different result is the definition of insanity. Mm -hmm. So we got to get rid of the excuses. And so if I can illustrate for a minute, Pastor, if we had a motorcycle up here, I would take you to it. Mm -hmm. This is powerful. So a kickstand, mm -hmm. right, is an excuse. Mm -hmm. The message, the metaphor is that th the excuses you make in life are a kickstand. Now, what's profound about a motorcycle that's so different from a car or any other type of tr mode of transportation is that any time you engage the kickstand, the purpose of the kickstand is to keep the motorcycle upright when the bike is not in use. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. The purpose of the kickstand is to keep the motorcycle propped up mm -hmm. when the motorcycle is not in use. Mm -hmm. So the purpose of an excuse mm -hmm. is to keep you supported mm -hmm. and propped up when your life is not in use. Mm -hmm. I, I, can't even, I, I can't even take it. <laughs> so, so, so watch this. Your excuses prop up your life to make you look good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but your life is not even in use. You're not, when you're using an excuse, you're not even yeah. using your life because the kickstand says to the motorcycle, yeah. the rider is not ready to ride. Mm. So what happens is when the engine is on, the moment you engage the kickstand, mm. the kickstand stalls the engine. Mm. And it says you're not ready to ride. Mm. Mm. Because every time we use an excuse, mm -hmm. we are disabling our ability to move forward. Mm -hmm. That's Every good. single time. Very good. So we have to learn how to kick back the kickstand. Because even when you get on a motorcycle, once you kick back the kickstand, what it tells the motorcycle is, okay, you can now do the work of what the kickstand was doing. Mm -hmm. And you got to be fully engaged, mm -hmm. and your legs can now do the work that the kickstand was doing. Mm -hmm. But you cannot ride with the kickstand down. Wow. So we've got to get rid of the excuses and we have to understand this too powerful, Pastor, if we can just touch on this for two seconds. The number one reason why people use excuses is for a psychological phenomenon called secondary gain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is a psychological phenomenon called secondary gain. And secondary gain, and we talk about this in the book, is basically any advantage gained from being in a prolonged disadvantaged place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any perceived advantage. Um, medical benefits, mm -hmm. government assistance, attention, time, time away from work, time away from unwanted tasks. Many of us as parents have had those times when our kid was really sick from school mm -hmm. and they stayed at home for one or two days, mm -hmm. but then they prolonged their sickness <laughs> <laughs> to stay home a few more days longer, right? Why do they do that? Because at the end of the day, they were getting some benefits out of staying at home. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, Pastor, stay in disadvantaged places mm. because of secondary gain. Mm. They're getting something out of staying broke. Mm -hmm. They're getting something out of staying beaten. Mm -hmm. They're getting something out of staying miserable. Mm -hmm. They're getting something out of staying unhealed. Because mm -hmm. ah! mm -hmm. as long as I'm unhealed, mm -hmm. you'll come bring me food. Mm -hmm. You'll come give me attention. You'll come give me time. Mm -hmm. You'll do stuff for me. But as soon as I become strong enough to do it on my own, I now have the responsibility to do it on my own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times we, we unknowingly, Pastor, we produce 
learned helplessness mm. in people mm -hmm. by enabling them mm -hmm. because of secondary gain. Mm. So every time you enable your friend to use their kickstand, because mm -hmm. not only, Pastor, do we create kickstands, but then we train our inner circle to accept the very kickstands that we created in our own lives. My God. Mm. And then we, so, and we convince them mm. that we're right. <laughs> And we convince our friends to let us play small. It's quiet. Come on. We convince our friends that our story is so bad mm -hmm. that they will pacify mm -hmm. our mediocrity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that they and they will allow us to justify our kickstand. Mm -hmm. So you get to keep the kickstand, but guess what? Is the motorcycle going anywhere? Mm -hmm. The motorcycle of your life will not move until you remove the kickstand. Mm -hmm. And, you know, here's how the Bible puts that. Yes, sir. It's Hebrews 12. Let us lay aside every, every weight. Every weight. And the sin. Lay it aside. Don't, don't hold on to it. Don't keep it. Come on. So that, what you're saying is so <laughs> right, rock solid, that it keeps people from becoming everything God wants them to become yes. and fulfilling the assignment that God has for their That's life. That's right. That's right. That's so right. So you're, you're, you're spot on. You're, you're saying some, you're, 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 you're punching it in. So you're, <laughs> you're fabulous. You are uh, an undercover preacher. That's oh my. exactly what you are. You are, you are perpetrating. Oh, uh, perpetrating. You're, you're, a real, you're a real preacher. <laughs> so how do people change? That's a I fantastic mean, question. How do, how, do, how, do we, how do we get people to move from that posture into a better posture? I love it. Place? Fantastic question. Yeah. So the best way, once you know that you, once you embrace the fact that you are using excuses. That's why I want everybody to go grab the book, get the workbook, just go to shiftedtoahighergear.com to get the workbook, get the book from Amazon. We are in an incredible campaign right now. We want everybody's support to go get this book. But pastor, when you realize I'm making excuses in my life, whether it's I'm too old, I'm too busy, I've got too many priorities, no matter what the excuse is. I heard this quote one time and I love it. They said, excuses are just like dirty gym socks. Mm. Everybody has them and they all stink. <laughs> 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 there is not a single excuse that mm -hmm. you will give that doesn't stink. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we serve an abundant God. Mm -hmm. We serve a more than enough God. Mm -hmm. And if God didn't give excuses, mm -hmm. we shouldn't be using excuses. Mm -hmm. Right? So how do you get rid of excuses? Mm -hmm. You shift out of excuses by shifting into what I like to call powerful, positive declarations. Mm -hmm. And what I love about the power of a declaration is when you use a declaration, you literally are using a psychological phenomenon mm -hmm. called cognitive reframing. Mm -hmm. What cognitive reframing does is it takes the very thing that you think is a limitation, ah, come on somebody, mm -hmm. and it turns it into a strength. Mm -hmm. So the excuse is I'm too old. Mm -hmm. The powerful positive declaration that replaces it, and we give you 30 in the book, is my past experience has prepared me perfectly mm -hmm. for this new season of my life. Mm -hmm. My old excuse was I didn't come from the right background. Mm -hmm. Slow down. You talk too fast. <laughs> I'm sorry. Because that point you just made, yeah. that first, the first excuse, declaration. The first declaration, yeah. It's profound. Yes, sir. Let's just slow Let's down, sit on say that. it again. Okay. Because, uh, you know, say it again. Because yeah, yeah. You're, yeah. you're saying your age you, you got to look at that in a positive way, yeah, not yeah, a yeah, negative yeah. way. Go yeah, ahead and yeah. say, just, just talk slow because yes, I, I don't want you to rush past these gotcha, things. Got man. I'm just passionate about yeah, this subject. Well, I know it's, you are. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, but you, I want them to get it. We want to yeah. get it. So the old excuse. You talk so fast that it's going over people's heads. Yes, sir. I got Slow you. down so they can digest it. They're going to go buy the book. <laughs> they are going to buy the book. But I want them to understand the they're principle. getting it. Yes, sir. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Go ahead. Say no, that I appreciate you, Dad. Thank you so much for that coaching. Seriously. So old excuse. Old excuses, I'm too old. The new declaration that replaces that excuse is my past experience. My past experience. Has prepared me perfectly. Prepared me. Everything I've gone through uh, in my on. past. Yes. Is preparing me for. Perfectly for this new season. Amen. That's that right there. If you just wake up every morning and mm -hmm. say that to yourself in the mirror and journal about that every morning, mm -hmm. come on somebody, mm -hmm. that will shift your entire paradigm. Absolutely. That's the whole purpose of this book is to teach you how to make small shifts mm -hmm. that make the big difference. Mm -hmm. So another one is I don't have enough money. Money, okay, right? yes, that's one that's, of those that's excuses. Exactly, right? right yeah. I don't have enough money. Yeah. Listen, I have more than enough resources to start today 
and more resources are being attracted to me every day. Mm -hmm. That's the new declaration. Mm -hmm. That's the new thing that you decree and it mm -hmm. shall be established. Mm -hmm. That's the new thing that you speak mm -hmm. into existence. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you use the power of a declaration to speak into existence what you want, not what you don't want. Because the scripture says, yes, sir. as a man thinks, <laughs> So is he. Right. The declaration helps to change the way you think. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is yes, your sir. thinking. And yes. the thing, let me let me just let me stick a pin here because Please. what I've discovered about people is they are in they they are they're prevented from going further and greater because of the way they think. That's right, that's right. That's they don't right. think the way God wants us to that's think. Right. That's and right. I, and I and I'm trying to spend time getting people to think the way God wants them to think. Yes, sir. Yes. And sir. I, and again, I think this is one of those books that's gonna help them think differently. Thank you. Thank so, you so much. So, I appreciate that. So go ahead. I'm I I don't mean to keep interrupting you. No. But what you're saying is so powerful and so profound and so great that I want to try to drill it into people. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go Absolutely. Ahead. Say that again. So, so, so we, we have to understand that when we use a powerful, positive declaration, like you said, it gives us a chance to change the way we think. And it gives us a chance to shift our thinking because that's really where it is. Because unfortunately, Pastor, people, most people prefer known hell rather than unknown heaven. I'll wait. I'll wait for him to get it. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. Most people prefer known hell mm -hmm. rather than unknown heaven because watch this. At least I know this. Mm -hmm. It's a bad place. It's a bad situation, but at least I know it. Mm -hmm. So uh, here's the challenge. We are afraid of stepping into the unfamiliar. Mm -hmm. So we stay in our circle of sameness. Mm -hmm. We stay in That's our comfort place. Level. That's we stay in the comfort zone. Comfort right, zone, yeah. right. And now watch this. Your comfort zone was set up by fear to keep you safe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ooh, that's good, too. Let's that's pause so, right there. That's good. That's, now we've jumped Say to it again. Say it again. Say it again. Your Say comfort that again. zone was set up by fear to keep, keep you, you safe. safe. Keep you to... Look, mm -hmm. See, now we, we... Pastor, we didn't jump to chapter six. Now, <laughs> <laughs> now we're in chapter six, which is shift from fear-based living mm -hmm. to faith-based living. Because I want to help folks tonight, Pastor, with this fear conversation. Mm -hmm. This is crucial. Man. Mm -hmm. Fear is only doing its job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Watch this. What if fear is only doing its job? Mm -hmm. And what if fear's job is to keep you safe? Because mm -hmm. fear thinks you're five. Mm -hmm. So fear is going to say, oh, baby, don't, 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 don't go after that. Don't, don't mm -hmm. try. Right? Because you, you have to remember, you just quoted the scripture. We got to be not just, we can't, we can't be conformed. We got to be what? Transformed by the renewing of our mind. Mm -hmm. But we have to understand the way the brain works. Mm -hmm. Your brain is a survival brain. Mm -hmm. The purpose of the brain is to keep you alive. Your brain doesn't make you successful. Your mind does. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. We gotta, we, we, yeah, we got we to let him marinate on that one. Your brain's job is to keep you alive. Mm -hmm. So the brain says this, because of the amount of information, I, I study neuroscience a lot, because of the amount of information that's coming into the brain at all times, the brain can't process all that information. Mm -hmm. So it deletes, distorts, and generalizes that mm -hmm. information all the time. Mm -hmm. Because it does that, it sets up all kinds of parameters around you mm -hmm. so that that way it can keep you safe. So your comfort zone was set up when you were younger. Your preferences, the things you like, all that stuff, that was set up when you were younger. So anytime you try to go after something that you have not had a previous reference point of success for, mm -hmm. your brain's going to say, ah, oh, we shouldn't try that mm -hmm. because there's no prior reference point for success. Mm -hmm. So anytime the brain sees that, it's going to perceive that as danger mm -hmm. and it's going to say, uh-uh, stay away from that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The problem is that's keeping you in your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, and we talk about this in the book, Everything that you want is on the other side of what's comfortable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. Calvary was not comfortable to Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, if we're going to be like him, we gotta, if we're going to reign with him, we had to suffer with him. Absolutely. And we had to be willing to go through things mm -hmm. and go through our own trials and tribulations. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, Pastor, I just firmly believe that we have to learn how to shift out of fear-based living, mm -hmm. where we're making decisions based upon fear. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a difference between the spirit of fear Mm -hmm. and the emotion of fear. Mm -hmm. So let's tackle that for a couple seconds. Mm -hmm. Here's how you know if fear is making the decision. Mm -hmm. Fear is always restricting you. Mm -hmm. if, the, if, if the voice in your head is, you shouldn't, you can't, 
It's not going to work. Mm -hmm. If it's a limiting voice, that's always fear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fear will never t say, go, go, go take the land. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. are well able to take the land. Mm -hmm. Faith says that. Mm -hmm. The voice of faith is always pushing you towards a thing, mm -hmm. whereas the voice of fear is always restricting you from a thing. That's how you know who's talking to you. Absolutely. So uh, let me tell a little testimony. Let me give you my little testimony <laughs> come on, here. Because, come on. Um, when we purchased this building that we're in, mm -hmm. here this is a former home improvement store. Wow. Uh, like a Home Depot. It's, it's called Heckinger's that was in this area. I think Heckinger's has gone out of business now, but um, it was a home improvement store. Okay. When we bought this building, back in 1992. Okay. It was rare for a church to be in a, a warehouse or a shopping center. It yes, just sir. wasn't common. Yes, sir. I had to travel to Chicago to find one church that had done it. Okay. Just to be able to see it. But when I did it, you know, there's a lot of voices that yes, say sir. don't do that. That's right. You know, That's we right. this building didn't have no windows. Still don't have no windows. Wow. I mean, it didn't, it is no windows. It, well, we do have some windows now, but <laughs> it didn't have any windows. Right. But, and we built we built this building out ourselves. Mm, we acted as our own general contractor. Wow. We built our worship center yeah. up the road, $62 million on uh, 4,000 seat sanctuary. We acted as our own general contractor. Wow. So in the in the natural sense, come on now. Most churches don't do that. That's right. That's right. That's but right. But I heard the voice of God, yes, and sir. sometimes God's talking to you. Come on. And you got to do some things that will the other folk would tell you don't do. That's right. That's right. Don't walk down that that's road. Right. Don't say. Don't go there. Yes. You got to have the, the 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 knowledge and the and the confidence in God that's and your right. relationship with God yes. and your walk with God to be obedient to whatever God's telling you to do. And I know God's telling some of you right now to do some things and to stretch out on some things. And uh, I want to encourage you to do so. So many people in our church have started businesses. Yes, and sir. Have taken uh, a step of faith yeah. and moved out. Start where you are. You might not have everything you need at the moment, but start where you are. Yes, sir. Every little bit Every little matters. Bit. That's right. You can do it. It's, and, it's, and it's the small shifts. Pastor, yes. it's, it's, it's those small little things. What are the small things we can do that can make the big difference? Well, that's what we talk about in chapter one of the book mm -hmm. is how do you make a small adjustment? Because a lot of us get intimidated by making changes in our life. We're, it's, it's, it's getting towards the end of the year. Everybody's in this reflective, evaluative place. Mm -hmm. Instead of trying to go into 2022 saying, I'm going to do these 25 massive things in my life, mm -hmm. which you're not going to commit. You're going to be <laughs> done with that, res that, that resolution list by the third week in January. What are some small shifts that you can do to make a big difference? Mm -hmm. Because, Pastor, I firmly believe it's the small things that really do. Big trucks mm -hmm. roll on small tires. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Big doors swing mm -hmm. on little hinges. Mm -hmm. Billion-dollar companies merge with six people in a small boardroom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Big forest fires start with the one small sports. match. Mm -hmm. It's and the sh and ships. Come on. Turn, turn on a little rudder. On a little rudder. One yeah. little rudder Ooh. turns the whole. Woo! Come on, say <laughs> it. It's, it's the small things. So if we can learn to shift the small things, and the every, small single, th every single chapter starts with the word a shift. Small thing. A small thing. Small Come on, thing. somebody. Little thing. It's a little thing yeah. that makes the big difference. Mm -hmm. Small foxes destroy the vine. Come Absolutely. on, somebody. It's, we we got to learn that, that. So, for example, I want every, can I can I give y'all can I give you an example of one shift mm -hmm. that will make a massive difference mm -hmm. like today mm -hmm. and the book has tons of them mm -hmm. every single day pastor you and I and everyone that's watching says these words I have to do this mm -hmm. I have to do that mm -hmm. and we go through our day with have to do's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what if you shifted one word that'll make the whole difference instead of I have to which sounds like obligation change it to I get to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I have to pick up the kids from school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I get to pick up my kids from school. Mm -hmm. I have to cook dinner, obligation. Mm -hmm. I get to prepare a meal for my family. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. That's an opportunity. Amen. Right? Amen. I have to go to the gym. Come Amen. on now. Amen. I get to keep my body in optimum shape, mm -hmm. and my future self will thank me for it. Mm -hmm. Come on. Amen. That's a small shift that can make a big difference. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's what the whole book is about. Outstanding. <laughs> Listen, let's close with this because we're coming to, we just got a few moments here. Sure, sure. Um, 
Uh, we we gotta, want everybody to go grab the book. They got to go grab yeah. it on Amazon. So, yeah. Yes, so, sir, let's talk about where uh, they can get it. So, yeah. Now, I had, how much is this book? Um, it's, uh, I think it's nineteen ninety five on Amazon. Yes, sir. Okay, all right. So, everybody go to Amazon and 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 pick this book up. We don't, we didn't, we don't have it here at our bookstore, do we? No, sir, we not yet. It? Not yet, okay. We'll but you'll be able to get it. So, if you want to... They can go to our website. Yep. First Baptist Church of Glen Arden website. Okay. To purchase the book through our media center. Fantastic. We urge them to do that as well. Okay. But uh, we want to, you want to get this book. Uh, this is, you know, this guy has really impacted our staff, our church, and uh, I wanted to have him come and share this. It's a profound book. There's one last thing I wanted to ask you before we close. I know we're work, working out time. You talk about the cat that don't care, that cat don't care. Yes, talk sir, yeah. about just that for a moment. Let's okay. close with that. I okay. want to <laughs> ask you that question real quick. Okay. Um, that's a good point I want us to close out on. Yeah, so we, we kind of talked about it a little bit earlier, but I can just double click on it. So the, the, remember, the thing I want you to remember about the cat don't care, Pastor, is at the end of the day, so many of us are concerned about things that people really don't care about. Mm -hmm. we, we think that a person cares about all of these outside accoutrements mm -hmm. before we can put our best out there. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I encourage people to do is put your best out there by putting out consistent imperfect action. Mm -hmm. I wanna encourage everyone, take consistent imperfect action on what God has given you to do. And no, one of the number one things that stops us from doing that, Pastor, mm -hmm. is the spirit of perfectionism. Mm -hmm. So many people stall their greatness, stall their launches, stall their dreams because they're trying to be perfect. Mm -hmm. You're never going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. So instead of trying to be perfect, lean into excellence. Mm -hmm. And so we help people by tell people do that by understanding, listen, the cat don't care about all that stuff that you're thinking about. Mm -hmm. Focus on giving people good food, mm -hmm. good sustenance, and people will constantly come back to you and they'll want to work with you over and over and over again. And I think that's what's really most important. De Della Toro McNeil, <laughs> you are an incredible motivator. Oh, thank you so much, and Pastor. And I want to thank you for taking the time out to come and share with our people. Again, I want to urge you all to get this book right here. Shift into a, Shift higher, into gear. a higher gear. Yes, Better sir. your best and live life to the fullest. And, and Pastor, if I can just mention two things real quick. So they can get the book on Amazon. They can also get it from your website. Uh, if people are interested in buying this book in bulk for their staffs or their ministries, they can go to porchlightbooks.com and type in the name. and They can buy it in bulk for their teams, their leadership teams, sales teams, things of that nature. Also, the, we created an incredible workbook based upon this book, which is really built to take the exercises and the experiences deeper. They can go to our website, shiftintoahighergear.com, to get the workbook version of the book. And I also went in studio and actually did the voice recording for the audio book. Oh, did so you? For, so it's an audio book too? So Audible, yeah. So anybody who's an Audible fan likes to listen to audio books. That's actually my voice. We didn't hire some actor. I went in studio and did it myself. So if you like Audible, that's the greatest way to, be, that's, to, be, to consume the book. You can have the audio book and the physical book right there. And we're in a really powerful campaign right now this whole week where we want everybody going to pick the book up this week to help us with our goals. All right. Thank you for coming, bro. A tremendous uh, honor. I'm so tremendous proud of you. Honor. So proud of the work that you're doing <laughs> and uh, how God's using you. Oh, uh, thank you. And, and everything you said is biblical. Is biblical. Yes, There's sir. There's nothing that you have expounded tonight that is not lined up with the scriptures. Amen. And that's Amen. why I'm having you here today. I don't very often do this, but I'm yes, glad sir. I was able to do this today. Well, and, and, and Pastor, you doing this speaks to one of the most important chapters in the book we didn't get a chance to talk about tonight, was chapter 8 which is shift your posse because who you ride with matters. Who you ride with matters. Oh, <laughs> my God. Chapter 8 is, is shift your posse because mm -hmm. who you ride with matters. Mm -hmm. And what we talk about really quickly in that, in that chapter is the importance of relationships. Mm -hmm. And that's why we encourage people. We have a Facebook group. We want people to join our Facebook group. It's uh, shift into a higher year, global biker posse. They can join our Facebook group because success is better together. And in that chapter, we talk about the importance of relationships. Mm -hmm. You and I have spent years cultivating this relationship. Mm -hmm. So when the time and the opportunity met, destiny was reached. Amen. And so I'm grateful for our relationship, and I want to publicly let you know I honor you. I appreciate you, man, and I really consider you a tremendous mentor and dear friend. My other mentor, Dr. Willie Jolly, is a minister here at the church, and he's been mentoring me for 15 years. My spiritual mother, Thelma Haygood, is here. I mean, just... This ministry has blessed my life professionally and personally, and I mean that. Yeah. So I thank you so much for your leadership, your excellence, and I thank you for being in my biker posse. <laughs> <laughs>
I'm honored to be in, in your posse. Yes, sir. Amen. So thank you all for joining us tonight. Let me just close with a couple things here today. Again, again, encourage you to get the book, Shift into a High Gear, and uh, the audio book or the workbook, just get it. Yeah. It'll be a blessing to your life. It'll, it'll help you. What Delatoro shares with you will help you. Amen. So let me encourage you to do that. Let me remind you again that uh, we love you. Our church loves you. The Lord Jesus loves you, no matter where you are. Maybe you have failed in everything we've talked about tonight. Yeah. Maybe you've missed the mark. Mm. Maybe you've, you have failed. But guess what? You're not a failure. That's right. God is the God of another chance. Yes, yes. He'll give you the opportunity. Maybe you tried to start your business, but mm. it didn't get going. Or maybe there's some little piece, some little turn that you need to make. Yeah. That will help it launch off and yeah. be what God wants it to be. So I want to encourage you to understand the Lord Jesus loves you, yeah. cares about you. He died on the cross that you could be forgiven of whatever your past sins might be. Yes. And if you're watching this today and you don't know the Lord Jesus, there's going to be a, a phone number on the screen, an email, or a, 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 a link to click. And we'd love to talk to you tonight yeah. or whenever. Whenever you can, you can email us at any time. You can hit that click, that link. It'll direct you to a place and give you clear instructions on what you need to do. We would love to have you be a part of our family. And I'd love for you to be a part of our church. Let me remind you and say at the end what I said at the beginning, that we're coming back in the worship service beginning on December the 12th. And I want to again salute and thank all of those who have uh, gone through the process of being, I think we're using the word certified, uh, to serve those who've been vaccinated. I'm thankful. You don't have to be vaccinated to come to church, but we do want those who are serving, and I'm so grateful for those who have gone through the process and are willing to serve the ushers, the parking, the choir members, the children's ministry, the Sunday school, the, just whatever area you're serving in. Amen. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. For the sake of the kingdom of God, I want to thank you. All right, so you're gonna, we're going to give you the news right now. And uh, again, thank you, Della Toro. And we'll see him again soon, I'm sure. I love you. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Have a great, great night and the rest of your week. God bless you.